Today on Experts Showcase, we go behind the episode with Mark Mawini talking about building a successful coaching business. Welcome to Expert Showcase Behind the Episodes. You see on screen with me, I have Mark Kosman and Mark Mawini. They just we just got done recording Mark the Mark and Mark show, which is what it, right. boils, it boils down. To. Sounds like so, a bad sitcom. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like the I feel like the third wheel at this point. So Mark, why don't you go ahead and take it away and uh, we'll get into the uh, behind the episode portion of, of our show. That's right. So Mark, you know. What we like to do is that we're going to have a little chat, you and I, about uh, the episode that we just shot and a little bit about your background and the kind of work that you do. Chris is going to be taking some notes uh, for people to watch on screen, and then we're going to flip it back to Chris, and he's going to give us some feedback and you know, help us think about you know, what, we could, what we could be doing with content uh, in, this, in this vein of uh, kind of online talk shows uh, and so forth. So, so Mark, um, we just shot a great episode. It's called Building a Successful Coaching Business, and we're going to show people that episode in just a couple of minutes. Um, tell me a little bit about, you know, how you came to focus on this and how you became sort of a coach's coach. Yeah, it wasn't exactly a case where I was, you know, two or three years old and, uh, you know, said, hey, dad, mommy, daddy, I want to be a coach, you know, like Tiger Woods with his father in <laughs> golf. Um, with me, my background's uh, real estate. You know, um, I got started in real estate when I was 21 years old, and um, I worked really hard through my 20s and, and worked a lot of 80, 90, 100 hour weeks and started to to become successful, you know, had a lot of clients coming in and got my name out there. And, um, you know, within about 10 years, I, I had, uh, opened up a couple offices and I was up to about 100 employees, like agents and employees working with me. Wow. And um, I thought, hey, uh, this whole uh, success thing's easy. You know, I never had a stumble through my 20s. And I always joke, I said I was expecting to have a private island, uh, you know, by the time I was 35 or 40 and Bill Gates. And uh, then 2009 hit and I went through a business closure. And uh, that's not a unique story, of course, with the way the global economy was going back in 2008, 2009. Not I took time to go all in, I guess, to use a, a, a gambling or poker analogy. And unfortunately, uh, it didn't work out. And uh, Mark, if it's any I, consolation, I was right there with you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, too bad we couldn't have met up for some drinks and, you know, kind of drown our sorrow back in <laughs> That's right. Um, went through uh, another stumble in 2012 that basically convinced me, you know what, uh, the way this market is and everything with real estate, I'm done, you know, had a good run with it, but it just, it wasn't my passion. It wasn't like I'm popping out of bed because I like looking at different types of houses and everything like that. Uh, how I got into coaching was I was basically helped on my feet by uh, several coaches and mentors who were really important uh, in my life. And I should mention that all those years when I was rolling and, and you know, never stumbling, I'd been approached by coaches coaches that said, hey, you know, basically, I want to work with you. I want to coach you. And I said, oh, I don't need a coach. I know everything, you know. Right. <laughs> um, and uh, then 2009 hit, and I thought, oh, I don't know everything, and maybe coach would have been good. Uh, so I was helped on my feet by coaches, and, and I really realized the value of coaching at that point because it was very personal to me. You know, um, I, I don't know where I'd be today without those coaches. So when I was planning my next steps, I thought, you know, I really want to do something in the personal development field because I've always been a huge, uh, big, uh, avid reader and, and uh, consumer of personal development, but uh, specifically coaching. Like, I just really enjoyed it. So that that's where it got to with launching into a coaching business and started more with a general practice. And then uh, as time went on, it morphed into that niche, which was helping coaches uh, with their businesses because coaches are so busy putting everything, all their energy out to their clients and everything else. But it's, it's a hard business to make a go at. And I, I hate to see coaches struggling. So I said, I want to help them with that. Yeah, it's that old concept of you need, you need to have that space to be working on your business and not just in your business or you don't have a business after a while. Well, we're going to be talking in your episode about the importance of, of niching and really narrowing down your focus. And it sounds like that's the exact journey you took too, right? So you were starting kind of broad and then kind of narrowing your focus to actually coaching coaches and helping them specifically with the business building part of, of coaching. So would you say that's kind of your ideal audience uh, at this point is, is kind of that coach that's kind of forming their business still and, and uh, is open to really getting some help with that? 
Yeah, I from my informal surveys with listeners of uh, natural born coaches, we generally cater to a newer coaching audience. So those are coaches who are uh, they may just be in the process of becoming a coach or uh, just their first few years of the business. And uh, it's not that we don't have listeners that have been at it 15, 20, 25 years, but usually those type of coaches uh, don't need as much help because they've been doing it for 15, 20, 25 years. Now, it probably would have helped them to have a resource like this back, you know, in the 1990s when they were getting going. Um, but so usually we're in that sort of newer coach in the first five years or so of their business tends to be uh, who, we're, who we're dealing with. And uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity with the podcast to talk to, to coaches from all sorts of niches and markets. And it doesn't matter if, if that coach isn't exactly what you're, uh, they don't do what you do. You can still learn some good business building tips from them, even though absolutely. it's a totally different focus. Yeah, no, I, I think that's absolutely key. Now, you know, in the in the content creation systems that Chris and I have developed, we tend to be very problem focused. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, really focusing on core problem areas that your your ideal audience is experiencing. What would you say are some of the core problems that the coaches you, at that stage of development are really kind of focusing on themselves that uh, that you can help them with? Well, I think the, the name of the game of coaching is to get that revenue coming in, you know, and I think a lot of coaches have, they have a weird feeling when it comes to sales, like they feel like it's a dirty word and they don't right. want to think of the money aspect of it because they're, they're people who want to help people and they, they just, they think it comes across a little bit tacky or whatever, there could be different reasons. And that's the biggest issue that the coaches have is, is getting paid uh, what they're worth. So they're, um, you ever, you ever see that um, Adam Sandler movie, The Wedding Singer? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, in that movie, he uh, teaches uh, piano lessons to a an elderly lady. And every time he gets done teaching her piano lessons, she basically slops a couple meatballs into his hand. You know, she's paying him with meatballs instead of money. <laughs> and although coaches, I'm sure, aren't being paid by meatballs, although maybe some are, um, unfortunately, they're not getting paid all the dollars they should be getting paid either and i think that there's a bit of a mental block with most coaches and i've even seen it with myself i've undergone uh, an aggressive uh, strategy of raising my prices and that took a little bit to get through that because the thought is "Ooh, do i want to do that i've been charging this much and do i want to double this or whatever and i've just realized that when you do that uh, for one you're going to be a better coach because you're not worrying if uh, the lights are going to be cut off or that if you can pay your you know whatever bills so you're going to be a better coach, but also the client's going to be more invested. If they're paying that much money to have you as a coach, they're not going to be skipping sessions or they're going to treat it serious compared to if you're being paid just a few dollars uh, for what you're doing. Excellent. Um, ah, terrific. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, so, and that is definitely a stumbling block. I, you know, a lot of people who are in the helping professions in general, they, they really have a hard time being that business focused person and that money focused person because you're, you just you're you're a heart person. You want to help. You know you want to make people's lives better. Yes. Well, again, you know, as with our previous the episode that we're going to show people in just a, a couple of minutes. Obviously, we could probably go on for hours and hours if we go there. But uh, you know, Chris's fingers are going to fall off if, I, you know, <laughs> if we leave him just taking notes the whole time here. So I'm going to flip it over to Chris at this point and uh, have Chris kind of feed back to us a little bit of what he's been hearing and see if he can help us kind of organize our thoughts a little bit here. Chris. Sure. Thanks. Mark, once again, great episode. Um, great. Wait, which one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I can't, you know, it's funny because I have to be real careful because people who don't know us that well yet, I could start making jokes about you, Mark, but people don't know that <laughs> you know, we've partnered together for over a year and everything. So Wait, which one? <laughs> both, both of you had a great episode. You could call me Xavier or Pedro or something, something totally different than Mark, right? Guest X. Guest yeah. X, yeah. Yeah, no, we didn't, sorry, we didn't put the, you know, we didn't do the voice scrambling like you asked us to yeah. put, the, put the pixelation on. Um, but Mark Malwini, great episode, a lot of great information. One of the things that I want to make sure people got from what you had just said um, was, you know, pretty much your, you know, as, as we call it in, in speaking, of course, the hero's journey. And I thought it was so impactful that you said, you know, you were a very successful real estate investor. So you knew how to build a business. Let's face it, you know, there, you know, in this day and age of people going and, and flipping houses and doing everything and thinking it makes a, if you can make a quick buck, sure. You can make a quick buck if you flip a house or two, or at least you used to be able to, but to build a company of a hundred people mm. that takes, that takes a lot. 
you know, I admire you for that and going through and starting. You know, I, I owned my first business when I was 20 years old as well. So it's something I own the storefront at the, at the age of 20. So I can understand that desire to start young and, and you know, just do whatever you can to, to be successful. You've been but, holding out, Chris. I don't know that story. You'll have to tell me later. <laughs> sure, sure. That, that'll be another episode. Yeah. What right. I think is very interesting that every coach can take from your story is you found what you were good at, which was building a business, and then you found a passion, which is helping other people, and realized there was a missing piece. It's kind of like well, there was that one kid's show, something, I forget what was it, Buzz Lightyear or something like that, about find a need, fill a need, or something like that. I don't, right. I don't remember. I'm really probably alter dating myself. See, Mark, I'm still trying to convince people I'm only 29 years old. <laughs> but anyway, so great job on doing that. I thought that was great. And one of the notes I made was that you, is that, and correct me if I'm wrong, you took the love of, and I'm looking at the note I made here. Oh, there we go. I can look at it on the screen. You took the love of the business, you know, you basically took your love of business and realized that coaches struggle building their business. Um, and basically that's how you, that's how your coaching business is born. Is that fair to say? Right. Um, you know, it's interesting, but uh, I've been coaching all my life. I just didn't realize I was coaching, you know. So when I had um, agents that, that um, you know, were a part of my team and employees, I was coaching. I just wouldn't consider myself a coach. And uh, really, the whole coaching personal development thing was staring me in the face. That was my passion throughout uh, since I first read Think and Grow Rich in high school. It's just um, I don't know why I didn't see it. So I was you know, busy with real estate, you know, working all those hours and everything else. And when real estate stopped, you know, my, um, it took a little while to realize this is what I should be doing. And the advice I give to uh, your audience, if you're trying to find something to build and, and decide which business to go into, look at where your free time is going. So mm -hmm. if you're at night, what kind of blogs are you reading when you're on your iPad and you're in front of the TV, but you're watching that or what, what do you, you know, enjoy doing without being paid for, you know, on the side. So that's the easy way. And that's what I was always doing. I had just tons of books. If I go to the beach, I'd have a pile of books with me and everything else it was all personal development. Well, and it's so interesting you say that because it's one of the reasons, um, it's one of the actually things that drove, I'll say, the creation of video content agency expert showcase and everything we're doing because, you know, Mark had a passion for interviewing and for videoing people, but I've always had a passion for watching, I'll say, TV, blogs, YouTube, the whole nine yards, and that's the way I consume information the best. And Mark and I were brand, you know, Mark Cosman and I were brainstorming about <laughs> it, and we said, yeah. you know, this is, you know, this kind of is a natural fit. I mean, you know, literally I'm not watching probably a hundred different things every day. I mean, it might only be for 30 seconds or a minute or five minutes, but it's, you know, it's just this massive amount of consumption. So anyway, the, the one, one of the things I want to ask you about is you mentioned coaches need to get paid what they're worth. And I love that because you're right. So many coaches get into it for the heart centered. I did as well. Um, and so many coaches, you know, or speakers want to be like a Tony Robbins and, and affect a hundred, you know, hundred million or seven billion people, um, but they don't, you know, they, they get icky with the the charging thing. Have you created a program? I know I'm putting you on the spot here. We didn't, we didn't say we we're going to ask this, but have you yet created a program or a system other other than the coaching that you do one on one with people to help them get over that financial uh, roadblock? It's more part and parcel with the coaching that I'm doing. Like early on, I want to know how the person feels about money and about sales. And I'll give you an example. I have um, a, a young coach I'm working with who's a great guy. He's a youth coach and um, just awesome guy. He'd give you the shirt off his back, and that's a good thing about him, but it's also a bad thing about him because he wants to help everybody. He's doing free <clears throat> coaching, free speaking gigs, and everything else. And he's um, you know just a, just a super guy for what he's doing. But I said to him, I said, you have to start – charging for this you know it's not enough to uh, sell a little bit of merchandise and get a few dollars coming in there you've got to charge for your services and the value that you're bringing and he acknowledged it was difficult for him to do that because he had a mental block where he felt like well i gotta help everybody and if i charge i'm not gonna be able to help everybody and and i've helped him get around that but i picked up on it right away i was like wow that's, there's something here i can tell and i think a lot of coaches are like that as well and as far mm -hmm. as i'm concerned if you're not being uh, paid a fair rate or, or getting that money coming in, then really it's a coaching hobby, not a coaching business. Well, you got to burn out too eventually. I, I always think of that, you know, when you're flying, they say, you know, if you're flying with somebody who needs assistance, make sure you put your own oxygen yeah. mask on first. Yeah. Right. I think getting paid is putting your own oxygen mask on first. So Chris, I, I think so, you're, you're hitting a really important point here. Well, and, and 
I guess the other point, the other, the other way I'm going with this is: Have you thought about creating, mm -hmm. you know, a a four part or an eight part or twelve part video series on taking people through some of the steps or all of the steps that you take your coaching clients through um, to help create and at least get them started to getting over that block with with money? I've thought about creating probably hundreds of programs in my Evernote folder on my phone. <laughs> and um, the challenge I have is um, trying to, like we talked about in the interview, that one big thing and focus on it. So obviously there's things like that that, I, that I'll be tackling down the road and I want to really focus on uh, product creation, but I have to make sure that the main things don't uh, fall by the wayside with that as well. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, definitely uh, it's uh, on the list of actually that's one of the things I've thought about. With hey, my, hey, Mark, I, I want to recommend you listen to this guy, Mark Mawini, in, in an interview <laughs> we're about to do because he talks about time and importance of time. Yeah, right. I, think you'll get, I think you'll get a lot out of it. I think you will. Yeah. And that's the thing I love with coaching. You can pick things and you can really uh, zero in, like you said, on something specific like that. So I'll have to do that and I'll have to remember to send you some royalties, uh, Chris. Like, you know, um, are you okay with like one or two percent or are you going to go for 10 or 20? <laughs> What, and this is being we'll, recorded. We'll, we'll meet you in the middle. We'll meet you I was going to say, middle. this is being recorded. I know it's going to be a billion dollar product. So, 2% of that, that yeah. works for me. So, you know. <laughs> so, so, here's the other reason. I, here's the other reason I brought it up. You mentioned time management, and then I'm going to kind of wrap up my, my piece of this segment. You mentioned time management and focusing on what's, on what's important and what's critical. Um, and whether it's that program or other programs, um, it, how can I put this? I guess the short, short version is, is it's one of the things that Mark Cosman and I have worked together because we're all over the place as well. So we developed a system we call the IDAP system, and we go into this thing called the 143, which is a core problem for milestones to success along that journey and three bullet point keys to success within milestones. So I want to just kind of throw that to you in a general sense, because as you're looking at your Evernote file and as you're looking at things and when you start to figure out, um, you know, where you have a little extra time, what we've been told from our clients is, is that they can create a month's worth of content, create one core problem, four milestones, three keys to success in an hour, two hours tops. Um, and they have this whole video series laid out. So while mm -hmm. I know you want to focus on things, Think about something like that, even you know whether it's come whether it's come talk to us about it or whether it's do it on your own. Think about something like that and structuring it very simple. I'll give you another quick example. I, I was flipping through yesterday, caught a piece of the Doctor Oz show, um, and I, I I called Mark right away. I called Mark Costner right away. I said, "Hey, Mark, Doctor Oz is even using the one four three. He was doing <laughs> literally. He was doing the, a simple layout of um, why you should go to an ER and." You know, when you should go to an emergency room versus an urgent care versus a walk-in clinic versus your primary care physician. And it was funny because on the big board had the four headings, had the three bullet points. And it's like, yeah. and it's so, you know, so it's been very interesting to watch our clients who struggled creating content, mm -hmm. struggled managing their time, implement this system and go, oh, it makes it nice, easy, bite-sized <laughs> chunks that my brain can focus on. Um, and that, you know. As you look, you know, as you're looking, you know, focus on the big things, which is awesome. I think every coach listening to this should take that away because I too, like you, fell into that initial trap of I think my message needs to be heard by everybody. I can help everybody. And it wasn't until, you know, I niched down and figure out figured out where I was really supposed to be that I be, that I became successful. So, you know, congratulations to you. Congratulations to what you're doing. Think about using the one four three in a way that'll that'll you know, maybe if you take an hour or two, who knows, maybe you can come up with some, you know, even if it's little bits of content. Um, other than that, people see the notes that are on the, people see the notes that are on the screen. I love, um, I love that you were talking about the, the block about money. And um, the last thing I was going to say is this, for those of you out there, yes, I'm speaking in generalities now. I'm also <laughs> speaking to the single person that's watching this on the other end of the camera who are worried about raising your prices and who um, think about um, investment and think icky of it, I was right there. And I'm telling you, when Mark said, when Mark Ma, when he says to you that people value things more that they invest in than they don't, he's a thousand percent right. I can count, I can count on the number, the, I can count on my hand the number of times a paying client has ever canceled, has, has ever canceled an appointment. 
I need an entire computer system to count <laughs> how many times non-paying clients have canceled or who have not honored the time. So once again, uh, I'm going to throw it back to the Mark and Mark show for any final comments. But Mark, Mark, uh, Mark Mawini, great episode. Mark Cosman, here you go. Here's your kudos. Great interview job, baby. Great, 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 great job. Thank you, so, thank you, thank so you. Thank you. No, Mark, Mark, it's, been, it's been, uh, you know, th thanks, Chris. I mean, that that is uh, great great stuff for our people listening as well to sort of think about how to organize their thought process and their information. Mark, it's been great uh, having you b behind the scenes and we're about to show people uh, why I'm saying it was great recording uh, an episode with you. you they'll, they'll get to enjoy that in just a moment. And uh, I'm going to have, before I have Chris say a, a couple of words to directly to our audience and we cut over to uh, the episode, any, any final thoughts uh, from you? Yeah, just uh, kudos to you guys for what you're doing with the uh, content creation because it is so important for coaches to do that. So uh, I like what you're doing with it. And do thanks for what you're doing for the coaching industry and other industries, speaking and everything else. And Chris, I know you have uh, some closing words for, for people who are in the coaching world and might want to take advantage of some of this. Yeah, so, so here you go. Three things I want you to think about. First, if you liked what we were talking about, about what Mark Mark's content is going to be about, which is stick around, watch the end, of, watch his actual episode. You're going to get a lot of great information about productivity, about time management, and just about being a more successful coach. If you're a coach or consultant and you know that being a guest on the Expert Showcase would help push your business forward and would be a good thing for your business and, and will give you a great piece of marketing material, which it will, then what you want to do is head over to expertshowcase.com, click the big apply button. It's all over the place. It's big. It's yellow, at least at this point. We might change the color later, but it's all over the place. Click the apply button, fill out a very short application, send it to us. We'll take a look at it and maybe have you as our next featured guest on the Expert Showcase. And finally, if you're a consultant and you said, you know what? I know this is right for me. I want my own internet talk show. I need this now to push my business forward. If you want visibility, credibility, and to build a great authority platform, then head over to videocontent.agency. Check out the services page. Check out the three separate packages we offer and contact us and let's see if we're a good fit to work together. And until next time, Mark, I'm going to roll the tape. Roll the tape. <laughs> Today on Expert Showcase, Mark Mawini talking about building a successful coaching business. Well, Mark Mawini, welcome to Expert Showcase. It's the Mark and Mark show today. So uh, we're talking about building a successful coaching business. Give me a quick uh, overview of what we're going to cover in today's episode. Thanks for having me on the show, Mark. It's uh, it's a treat to talk to a Mark with a C, um, right. especially one in, in the States. I'm in Canada, common with uh, the French well, here. But. It's the correct spelling. You know, everyone else, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah, and uh, you've probably seen the Starbucks uh, joke, too, with uh, when someone asked, uh, they, they said, what's your name? They said, Mark with a C, and they spelled it uh, C-R-A-R-K, <laughs> you know, and uh, that hasn't happened to me in uh, yet in Starbucks, knock on wood, but. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on the show, Mark. Uh, basically, like you mentioned, I, I um, work with coaches, you know, so I coach coaches and yep. uh, having a lot of fun doing it. It's my passion uh, is really helping coaches build stronger businesses. And I do that a number of ways. A, a big uh, chunk of my time is spent with my podcast, Natural Born Coaches, and reaching a lot of uh, coaches out there. And I think we're doing some good. So I'm having a lot of fun. Excellent. Well, and as we were prepping for the show, we we talked about the fact that we're going to we're going to spend a few minutes focusing on three main takeaways for the coaches who are watching and listening. So we're going to talk about choosing the right niche. Then we're going to talk about effective time management strategies. Then we're going to talk about jumping on opportunities when they arise. So let's take those from the top, uh, Mark. Let's go with choosing the right niche when you're working with coaches, when you're trying to get them to really build their business. Uh, what do you what do you advise them? How do you get them to choose the right niche? 
Well, that's um, a point that's really has a, a real personal meaning to me because when I became a coach, I made that mistake that most coaches make, and I jumped out there without a uh, we say niche in Canada. Oh, I'll have to it'll screw me off if I try to say niche. You know the American stuff. We I made the mistake. Okay, we'll put subtitles when you speak Canadian. Yeah, I don't I don't want to sound snotty or anything. Say niche, you know niche niche. It's all the same, you know. But uh, tomato tomato. Um, but every almost every coach or a large majority of coaches make the mistake of not choosing that right niche when they uh, become coaches. And I made the exact same mistakes. So when I became a coach, I, I said, hey, I'm going to be a business coach, you know, because that's what my background was as an entrepreneur for years and in the real estate field and everything. And I thought I'd like to work with entrepreneurs. And uh, so I'll be a business coach, you know, and I got the website done up and the fancy cards and, you know, all that other stuff and waited for people to beat a path to my door. And it never happened. You know, you had the tumbleweeds flying by. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So it took a few months to kind of uh, get into my head that, hey, maybe there's another way to do it. And uh, I went through, um, you know, with my process of examining my business and doing things like a mind map, you know, I guess there's not a lot of time to go into those things today, but a mind mapping exercise and other things, I determined that I really enjoyed working with coaches. I had a couple of clients who were coaches and I said, okay, I'm going to focus more on just dealing just with coaches and um, sp more specifically newer coaches or who I tend to work with, as opposed to say, Joe, the plumber or Mike, the accountant, or the, the other business owners that are out there. So I, I really think it's important that coaches have to choose some sort of niche to narrow it down because it's just way too hard to get heard out there and try exactly. to be found and get your head above the crowd if you don't have one. Absolutely. I mean, we we share the same focus in, on that one. And it's a real learning curve, right, for all of us. I mean, because you think you're being narrow enough through the World Wide Web and you realize you can pick a fairly, what you think is a fairly obscure niche I'll, I'll speak Canadian. And yeah. uh, and there's like 10, 10 million websites. I mean, so you've got to really yeah. focus, right? If you yeah, and the logic sounded good. You know, I thought there's how many hundreds of thousands of entrepreneurs in the right. world. You know, that's uh, that makes sense. You know, you're casting as wide net as possible, but unfortunately it doesn't work that way. Now, that being said, you can take it to the other extreme. You don't want to say, hey, I'm going to uh, work with left-handed dentists from Idaho who are recently divorced and are in the process of selling their business. Exactly. The, the, the five months. people in your your audience yeah, uh, you know, uh, you know, not, not to insult the left-handed dentist from Idaho going through the divorce but um, I, the odds are there probably isn't one like that then suddenly that's there's a saying that you niche until it hurts but you can go too far when you when it's gonna hurt too much so you have to choose that sweet spot where it's a nice tight niche but not so tight like that kind of I know that's a silly example but well, I think well, no, but, it. but it's an excellent point uh, yeah but you know that that's people's fear right is that by by you know focusing on on a niche that they're going to essentially oh my God, I'm too narrow. And, and people tend to err in that direction that they are still nowhere close narrow yeah. enough. Well, uh, everyone looks at Tony Robbins and other ones and they want to impact 7 billion people in the world. Right. And they think if I'm dealing with a specific niche, I'm not going to be able to do that. Well, there's always that option to expand your niche as time goes on down the road. And a perfect example is Gary Vaynerchuk. You know, when mm -hmm. he got started with Wine Library TV, mm -hmm. it was very specific wine videos on the internet, which now is more common, but back when he was doing it ten, right. almost 10 years ago, it wasn't a big thing. And then once he got traction in that niche, then he wrote Crush It, of course, and you know, started talking about uh, general social media and marketing and how people could incorporate their stories into social media. And then he started speaking to a wider, uh, broader audience, but he would have never been able to do that if he hadn't had that success first in a tight niche. Well, obviously, we're going to have to segue to your next bullet point because you know we, we need to do I some talk management. About we could things. talk. Listen, we the Mark and Mark show could go on for the next five hours just mm -hmm. about you know niching and focusing and, and being narrow. But uh, we we've got to manage our time or, and move on. So let's talk about uh, the, the next piece here, which is effective time management. Um, why is that critical for coaches to really pay attention to? A lot of my focus here this year actually is on time management and productivity because my whole life I've been I'm the type of guy I'll I'll generally bite off uh, more than I can chew you know and I um and that ends up me working you know up at five a.m. and working till one in the morning you know and then I, I know hours. nothing about that I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about now. I'm sure you get eight or nine hours beauty rest every night you know yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you're watching Jerry Springer through the day, and you get you know 20 minutes of work done. That's right. Um, these, these rings under my eyes, I, they're 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 just for show. <laughs> yeah. So the the problem um, I have is I had to get a better handle on it this year, and it's uh, I'm a big reader, and what ended up happening is 
I started reading some books that talk specifically about getting a better handle on your time and productivity, and they really opened my eyes. And the two ones uh, that in particular that stand out are The One Thing with Gary Keller, which you've probably seen that one. And then there's uh, Essentialism with uh, Greg uh, McEwen. And uh, that's an excellent book as well. And what it made me realize was by trying to take on everything and thinking I'm being more productive, I'm actually being less productive because I'm not at 100% for everything. So instead of having 100 things you're focusing on, focus on that one thing or, you know, narrow that down and really put all your attention on that. And it means saying no. Like I've started saying no to a lot of things I normally would have taken on because you hate to say no to people. You want to help out. But if not, you're not doing yourself any favor by loading your plate. Up. Right. So I've got a really specific uh, productivity strategy that I use and because people say, how are you able to do a daily podcast, which is, you know, a lot of work with between that. I do a lot of the editing and show notes and promotion and everything else. I sweep the floors and, you know, the cash register and wash the windows and it's metaphorically speaking. So um, I do everything or most things for the podcast and then also uh, run a busy coaching business so it's a question how do you juggle those things and that's right. i've gotten better at it now it's been a constant tweaking and, and uh, working through the process and it's getting much better now i still have a ways to go i think i could probably say no a lot more and i could tighten it in even more but it's getting there excellent well yeah and so you've you've really paved the way by using yourself as the template and now you've worked out the systems that you can teach yeah. other coaches so that they can shorten that learning curve that's excellent stuff I'm the get the guinea pig and I don't think I, I don't think I'll ever have a Tim Ferriss four-hour work week and I don't think I want to have a four-hour work well, week. I would go nuts the other 164 hours but the, the, I'm the, trying the to get there. The secret is that Tim Ferriss's four-hour work week, he, he you know, pa basically packs about 80 hours into every day for people who actually know Tim Ferriss. I don't think yeah. he's anywhere close to a four-hour work week. It's a great concept, though. Love yeah, it. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so let's segue then to uh, your third point, which is you know, coaches need to really jump on the opportunities. Um, what, what are we talking about here? Well, um, I guess something just happened a couple of weeks ago, which which illustrates how important it is to jump in opportunities. Um, I find as a coach, if something presents itself that's a good opportunity, let's say for example, me getting on this show. You know, I spoke with uh, with you and with Chris Sprague, and I'm like, great, I'd love to be on the show, and I booked it right away. You know, um, a lot of people wait and they say, okay, I'll do that. I'm busy. I'll do it tomorrow, and it gets pushed off, and gets pushed off, and then you lose the opportunity. I'm in the process with Natural Born Coaches. We're about to air our, our 100th episode as we're recording this now. Congratulations. And, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's great. It's, um, you know, looking forward now to number 1,000, but we'll take them one at a time. Um, and uh, I asked a, a coach several months ago if he'd be interested in coming on the show as the 100th episode guest, which I think is a good opportunity. It's not exactly, you know, being on Oprah or anything like that, but it's, you know, I'm going to be promoting that heavily and, and we've got a lot more buzz than the usual show. And uh, the coach uh, basically first didn't get back to me. Then a couple days later said, yeah, I'll check out your stuff. And then, you know, don't hear from him for weeks or whatever. So finally I had an opportunity to get uh, the awesome David Ralph from Join Up Dots. Uh, I've been on David's show. He's popular podcaster in the UK and great guy. And uh, I, I was interviewed at his show and I said, it just kind of hit me, David, would you, would you like to come on my show? I'd love to have you as a, a guest number 100. And right away he said, sure thing, Mark. Well, we're off uh, Skype. We were probably off Skype for a minute and I checked my email and uh, my online calendar shows that I have a booking from who? David Ralph, you know, he just hopped right off there and booked it. And so the, uh, the moral, uh, the, the original coach got back to me like a day or two later and said, great, I want a book. What's that link again? You know, or whatever. And I said, <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. You're, you're not getting a hundred slot anymore. So, well, no, you're not, you know, and um, it, it's just an example of um, that, a small example of how if you don't jump on opportunities, take care of it, then think you're going to miss out, miss a boat on it. So I can usually tell even with uh, coaches I'm working with, which coaches are the most keen or are going to do the best with my coaching, because when we're trying to book our original strategy session, if they say, well, let's, you know, make it three or four weeks down the road, I'm working on the kitchen, we're doing renovations and <laughs> You know, we're going away next weekend, you know, and they kind of ho-hum ho and, and not really in a big rush, then uh, generally that's not going to be as good of a client as the one that right away rushes into your online calendar, gets booked, they're keen, they're ready to go, and they want to get started. So you, you have to jump on those uh, opportunities, and, and this I, I hope this isn't harsh. I, I say because this was always said when I was a kid, so, you know, bleep it out if you have to, but there's a saying you have to be like, a, you know, jump on it like a fat kid on a Smarty, you know, and I've always <laughs> remembered that one. And, and I think it's true. You got to jump on those opportunities.
Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my, my, my version of that is just that, you know, opportunity is a door to door salesman. And if you don't open the door, your neighbor is going to get the knock on the door. So uh, oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You never know where an opportunity could lead. You know, had Chris not booked on my show to be interviewed on in natural born coaches, I wouldn't be here today. And, you know, we wouldn't be doing this and God knows what we'll be doing down the road. So. That's right. Well, yeah, Mark, it has been excellent to have you on the show. This is, this is great stuff for coaches to really pay attention to. We've been talking Mawini here about building a successful coaching business. And just to recap, we've been focusing on three main things, choosing the right niche, effective time management strategies, and then yes, absolutely jumping on the opportunities when they knock and not missing out. You know, you, somebody, somebody listening to this right now could have been your hundredth episode and they, they missed out. So um, Mark, I know you've got an awesome website. You've mentioned your podcast. Uh, you know, people should definitely be listening to that. Uh, people should go to naturalborncoaches.com and connect with you. And I know you've got a, a webinar in the works as well, right? I do. I, um, you know, I, that's an example where I didn't jump on an opportunity. I've been so busy late 2014 with getting the podcast rolling that I didn't do the webinars because of I, I realized I had to focus on that, but I'm now um, hopping on the, the webinar uh, wagon, and um, I've got a, a webinar that's starting uh, the next couple of weeks from uh, from now, and uh, looking forward to it. It's going to actually focus on a lot of what we talked about today with the importance cool. of, of niching, and it's going to be walking people through the process of how I niched and how I help clients uh, to choose a coaching niche and everything else. So what I'm doing, and you've probably been on these webinars, I'm, I, I hate the webinars that are like 60 minutes of sales pitch, just uh -huh. sell, 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 just drives me nuts. I've packed as much value as I can into that 60 minutes. I want people to walk away with that to get that good free info and, and not be just an infomercial. So I think we've achieved that balance and we're just about ready to launch. Excellent. Well, there you have it. So Mark Mawini, you want to connect with him at naturalborncoaches.com. If you get connected there, you're not going to miss out on the launch of his webinar series, but you also want to get connected to his podcast show. Mark, it has been great having you on Expert Showcase. I look forward to speaking with you again and uh, building a long-term relationship. This sounds awesome. Thanks, Mark. And another great Expert Showcase episode. Chris, what should people do right now? Yeah, if you're watching this and you're a coach or consultant, imagine what it would do for you and your business if you were a guest on Experts Showcase. And here's the best part. Other than, other than possibly increasing your business, an appearance on Experts Showcase is free. We give you a copy of your episode so you can use as marketing collateral, and we give you a, a coaching session to go along with it to, to tell you how you can best market your episode and other tips and tricks about your, your business. So what you want to do is head on over to expertshowcase.com, click on the big yellow apply button, and apply to be our next featured guest on the Expert Showcase. Now if you're a coach or consultant and you've already imagined what having your own internet talk show will do for you, then we want you to head to videocontent.agency and check us out, check our packages out, and get in contact with us. Let's see if we're a good fit, and let's see if we're the ones to produce you and make you the next star and have your own internet talk show. And until next time, uh, Mark, anything else? I couldn't have said it any better, so uh, just do what he said.